At present, the impacts of climate change are being felt around the world. Warmer summers, fluctuating snowpack levels, shrinking water reserves, and a reduction of readily available adequate water are creating a crisis that directly harms both humans and the environment. The effects of climate change um, are interesting in the fact that with drought especially, you see sort of a whipsaw action of a couple years of very dry weather and then record levels of snow and rainfall. So you get the seesaw motion related to it. So climate change is making it a little harder to plan for. And so with less water, you need to use more of your local sources. And from the local sources, we may have some contaminants or issues of cleaning it up. Drought strains our community, our economy, and can jeopardize public health and safety. When there's not enough water available, dire consequences can happen. Water agencies plan for dry times. Through integrated planning, strategic water resource and infrastructure investments, water storage, water use efficiency, and innovation, we meet demands and minimize drought impacts. Through innovative processes, a local municipality is addressing resiliency by taking an approach that allows wastewater to be treated to a state and federal standard and reuse to provide a sustainable supply for the health of its local lake. At our largest water treatment facility, we process nearly 6 million gallons per day of uh, wastewater and turn it into tertiary recycled water. 5 million gallons a day at least goes to Lake Elsinore to help supplement the Lake Elsinore level. Each year, we anticipate there is going to be anywhere from 4 to 5 feet of evaporation at the lake, and the water that we add covers about 2 or 3 feet of that evaporation. The treatment process we use to make the water safe to discharge into the lake is called Title 22 Tertiary Water Treatment, which means it takes secondary treated wastewater, runs it through additional treatment processes that include primarily disinfection and filtration, and removes additional pathogens and impurities in the water. Specifically, nitrogen and phosphorus is removed to a much lower level so that we don't contribute to any additional nutrients to the lake that would support future algae blooms. Working towards healthy lake levels, the municipality partners with the city of Lake Elsinore and other water authorities to protect its local watershed. The greatest community benefit in the use of non-potable reclaimed water is to protect the local drinking water resources. So to use reclaimed water uh, as a way of filling our lake not only protects uh, that resource, but also it promotes biodiversity, it reduces the algae bloom, and allows for recreational activities on our lake, which stimulates economies, uh, which helps our local campgrounds. In addition, the availability of water is also threatened by water quality challenges. There's a variety of contaminants impacting our water supply, arsenic, vanadium, and other things. Our primary focus right now is uh, PFAS, what we call per and polyfluoroalkyl substances, and we're using and looking at different technologies to remove that from our drinking water. PFAS are man-made chemicals that you find throughout the environment. Although water agencies have not put PFAS chemicals into our watershed, over time they have entered our water supply. You'll find them in things like firefighting foam, nonstick cookware, carpeting, shampoo, makeup, and even lipstick. California's changes in water quality regulations called for a reevaluation of water sources, leading local governments and municipalities to seek innovative, cost effective ways to treat for contaminants. With surface water bodies, what happens is the quality in the lake is never consistent. It changes throughout the seasons. In addition, the lake is at the end of a watershed. What that does is it brings a lot of pollutants, contaminants into the lake. On top of that, we also have surface water disinfection rules that we need to comply with. So you take all of this and then you add PFAS on top. You can understand how complicated this is when it comes to PFAS removal. All of the local water agencies are impacted by PFAS throughout all of the watersheds. We have it in our surface water body. Most of the local agencies, they're dealing with PFAS contamination in groundwater. And groundwater quality does not fluctuate, does not vary significantly over time, whereas surface water quality changes. So while local agencies have PFAS in groundwater, it's relatively straightforward to deal with that PFAS when compared to PFAS in surface water. With the ability to treat vital drinking water to supplement current local supplies, the solution is innovative in its process of removing contaminants and ensuring high quality water for the area. There's no out-of-the-box solution that helps remove PFAS from water. 
the approach that we took is we launched into a pilot program. So this was a 12 to 18 month pilot program where we evaluated a wide variety of technologies. And at the end of it, we ended up selecting two technologies that operate together. One would be granular activated carbon, and that would be followed by an ion exchange process. So the investments in these technologies help us achieve three things. One, they guarantee complete PFAS removal from the water. They also deal with any contaminants in the water. And lastly, they help us achieve surface water disinfection, which is most important from a compliance standpoint. One of the distinctive aspects of the pilot program that we launched is we used a clay-based filter media. As we were piloting through the process, we noticed that this filter media performed exceptionally well. We tested the media under different conditions, different water quality conditions, different seasons. And what we noticed is that this media was very successful in eliminating all the PFAS. We are hoping that the lessons that we've learned, they serve as a model. They provide a framework for other local agencies or other regional agencies that may have PFAS in their surface water bodies. And if this is approved, this would be the first time this would be used for water treatment.